Thank you very much. Uh, so today I'll be giving an uh, um, introductory tutorial on Orient, a data mining tool. Um, so uh, this is a, um, a very introductory tutorial. So um, just um, bear with me uh, for the very basic thing. Uh, so I'll start with the basic features of Orient. Um, in Orient um, is an open source software. So uh, by for everyone, beginners and professional, I try to mean that uh, we can do small scale projects in Orange and also we can do large scale projects uh, in Orange. So Orange offers you um, to do visual programming. And by visual programming, I meant um, that maybe you do not need to code your uh, functions, but you can draw your functions. Uh, um, Orange offers you to do interactive data visualization with uh, beautiful and interesting graphics. Um, Orange supports hands-on tutorial and training. So the doc documentation of Orange is really rich. So they have um, videos and also they support documents. Um, the functionality of Orange can be extended through add-ons. So I'll be showing how can um, we install add-ons uh, for Orange. The application of Orange uh, includes data mining analysis, data visualization, machine learning, bioinformatics, and text mining. So I will be like highlighting um, almost all of them uh, very shortly today. So Orange is a Python library, so you can literally like import Orange and do all the functions that you can really do in Python. So that means uh, you can um, write um, the codes uh, that will include the functionalities of Orange in environments like PyCharm and Python Win, and definitely you can uh, write your Python scripts in terminals and you can use shell like IPython. So Orange uh, has been developed at um, the Bioinformatics Laboratory of the Faculty of Computer and Information Science of University of Ljubljana uh, of Slovenia, um, and it is available across all platforms. So uh, Orange can be installed uh, through Anaconda. So this is like my Anaconda navigator. And you can see that there is an option to install uh, Orange here. Or uh, Orange can be installed through PIP separately, uh, as I have done it separately. And um, it is available separately, not inside Anaconda. This is um, basically the first uh, interface, like the basic interface of Orange. and uh, uh, what you can see here is orange um, interface is composed of two main things. One is on the right hand, what is called a canvas. And here is the place where you can literally like draw your program. And on the left, you have a wizard, um, widget wizards, where different kinds of widgets are available. And I'll be showing like most of them. Um, and you can just drag different wizards from here to here and draw your program. So this is the welcome message from Orange, and you can just um, click on the red button, and then here is the canvas and the widget widgets. So <clears throat> the first example that I will show today is the feature ranking by rank methods and also by PCA. So I believe like um, both in the scientific community and uh, in the engineers community, like ranking of feature is a very popular task that we often do. So let's go to my orange interface and I'll show how I can draw this programming. So just, just to give a brief idea, these are different widgets. So when we write our code, or we can write functions where we can give inputs and we can take outputs. So you can assume that these widgets are basically a functional module where you can transfer input and you can get outputs. And there are some widgets for which you can only take output, but you cannot give input because it can only like give you output. So it, you, you can literally like see it through this um, uh, circle, like half circle here. If you have two half circles, that means you, you, can, you have both input output functionality. And if you have like just one, then you can only take output. All right, so let's go to my orange interface.
So uh, I hope everyone can see my orange um, interface and uh, this is um, the welcome message. So he, from here, you can go to the tutorials, you can see some examples, you can uh, go to the online tutorial and you can open um, or create a new project. So I will just um, skip it and here I will start my first project um, that I will also deliver. Um, so this is the data widgets. You can see like we can import data and we can take the data into data table. So let's just start. So this is my file widgets. And if I double click on this, then here I can import data. So orange actually comes with several data sets, which are the .tab file, which is like simple tab delimited file. And um, I will be selecting a data set called brown selected dot tab. So this is an East expression, gene expression data set for East. Um, actually, I also uh, do not know like very detail of this data set that we do not need to know because we'll analyze the data to find uh, informative information, good information out of this data. So let's open this data set. And what you can see is Orange is showing you that we have uh, 186 rows here and 79 features, so 79 columns here, and one is a meta attribute. So what you can see here, you can see the type of your data here, and you can see the role of your data here. And also you can change the role of your data here. So in this data set, these are all the features. And at the end, this is the meta attribute, and this is the target. So if you want to do prediction, this will be actually your class information. And as you can see, like there are three classes and these are all the numeric features. All right, so let's go to the next step, which is I will take this um, data from here into a data table. So what you can see is I can extend a line from here and can click what widget I want. And this is my data table. So I'll just click on the data table and here is the data that I just imported from brown selected dot tab file. So here we can see that uh, we have some missing values and orange reports. What is the proportion of the missing values? And orange also reports that we have a discrete class information with three values <clears throat> and we have a meta attribute. All right, now let's try to rank the features. So here uh, among the widgets, I can see there is a rank widget. So I can click here and my rank widgets come here. So what I will do is I will draw a connection. So uh, you can see that uh, I have a label on my collection that I can, in, I can transfer on the whole data or I can just transfer a selected amount of data. And by selected amount of data, what I mean is, if you double click on your table, you can just select few rows and feed only these three rows into your next widget. But if you do not have any selection, then the whole data will be um, inside this rank widget and how you can do that you double click on this connection and you change data to data not selected data to data all right so now let's open the rank and what you can see here is there are several scoring methods that are already available in orange which is information gain information gain ratio guinea anova chi square Relief F and FCBF. So what is interesting here, these are very popular ranking method, feature ranking method. And even if you do not know very detail of this method, you can use it. And what Orange reports here as the output is, um, the, uh, the ranking of the feature or the list of the feature according to the rank by each of this metric. And if you want to sort your features according to gain ratio, you you have to just sit, click on the gain ratio. Or if you want to do it by guinea, then you have to just click uh, on the guinea. So, and, and as you do it, you can see that the listing of the features um, are changing. All right, 
now um it's it's always a case for us that we we do feature ranking because we want to select a subset of features that are more important to predict or to identify the class variables so you can like uh, select uh, top 10 or top 5 for an example here i have uh, given an input 10 because i want to see the top 10 uh, features highlighted and one interesting thing about um, orange is you can always generate a report as a pdf or report format um, of everything that you generate and you can do it by clicking here so this is your report where you can see that all the things that that is the outcome of the rank widget you can see it in here all right so let's select the top 10 features so we got an idea that these are some useful features all right now let's do some visualization and what i would like to do is now i would like to cluster my uh, my data depending on these features so what i will do is i will uh, compute the euclidean distance um, using the feature variables and you can see that I am using only the reduced amount of data. So this will be like with only 10 features. And after clicking the distance, I can take the output to higher Kikal clustering. So now if you select the higher Kikal clustering, so here is your clustering of your um, classes using those 10 features. So as we can go down, we can really see like uh, it was uh, like a good clustering. So here are all the ribosomes, so one class. And the respiratory is here and protease is here. But still we can see like there is some overlap here. So you can see that resp and protease are two different class but clustered in the same group. So now let's check out that what are those overlapping points in our feature space and how can we do that? So we can... Um, do that uh, using um, scatter plot. So let's go to the visualize section of the widget wizards and bring a scatter plot. And to do this, we have to give the output of the hierarchical clustering to the scatter plot, and also we need to give the data from rank to the scatter plot. Now let's open the scatter plots here. Mm. Just give me one second. So this is the hierarchical clustering output. And just change this reduced data to data, not subset, because we don't want to see the subsets, but only the data. <laughs> So we'll just remove the subset link and we'll connect this. And so here is my scatter plot and here is my hierarchical clustering. Oh, okay. So here I have both together in my screen. So uh, let me explain a little bit the scatter plot wizard. So uh, he, uh, here you can see that uh, there are two features uh, in your x axis and y x axis and y axis, and you can identify what are those two features, and uh, you can uh, color by your target uh, function, and you can always remove this label so that it does not overlap with your uh, informative area of the plot, and you can change the shape according to the function. So now you can see that not only the color but the shape of the points are different. Um, and then you can also change the size and everything. And you have some other plot properties available here. For an example, show grid line or like some, some um, show plus densities, but um, you, you can or you cannot. All right. So and you always, uh, for the images, you can always save the images. So this is, um, you will save your image uh, in different formats. So I'll just cancel it. Now, let's check out these um, overlapping points in the feature space. So here is the um, point that I wanted to show, and you can see that it has highlighted this point and this point. Mm, so, okay, let's do the shape as same shape. And, and if, 
if, if I select this uh, higher cluster in the hierarchical plot, then it highlights these two points. So basically it makes these two points solid points to show that these two points are are basically these two points in the cluster and you can see that these two points are really like in the overlapping region so this is how uh, by orange you can really visualize what are those points um, or instances in your uh, data that has like overlapping features so you can like get rid of this data or you can um, explain this data in a different way all right so just to show you that uh, another feature uh, that there is a very nice block box plot available in orange uh, so let's see the box plot of the reduced data so uh, so here is like box plot of a feature um, DAO F according to diff three different classes so in this block box plot it shows you the mean and the standard deviation and the other categories and also you can um, compare with medians and or by means so median is the yellow line and mean is this uh, gray line all right now uh, let's do another thing with our feature uh, sets and which is um, the pca analysis which is very popular in um, the scientific community so let's uh, feed the data from the data table to pca and see what is here so this is a diagram called scree diagram so what you can see from this diagram is um, you can uh, is how many uh, features has covered um, around 73 percent of the variability in my data and you can also reduce it so basically in this um, x exit it shows the number of principal components and in the y-axis, it shows the proportion of variance covered. So I, uh, we knew that it has 79 features in this data we had, uh, so 79 number of columns, but uh, we can see that if we just take 10 variables uh, or 10 features, then it explains um, 73 point or 74% of the variability within our data set. So let's take like 10 principal components. <laughs> and feed this output of the principal components into a data table. So I'd like to see the components and also the transform data. So in this data table, what here you can see is for each principal components, what are the widths of the variables? So these are the uh, names of the variables and these are the coefficients of the very uh, features for each of the principal components so i have selected like 10 principal components so this will be a data table of 10 into the number of feature um, of size and then what i would like to see is i'd like to see the scatter plots of the principal components mm. yes i want to see the transform data and let's open the scatter plot so I'll make the um, shape similar. And what is interesting feature from Orange is you can really um, uh, find some informative projections. For an example, uh, go here and start it. So what it shows is uh, principal component one and principal component three uh, can explain like um, the target variables very well. And if you select the one which, is, which can explain less number of uh, target variables, so here you can see like literally the data's points are very op overlapping. So the useful principal components are PC1 and PC3. And uh, definitely we would like to uh, see that what are the features that is associated with PC1 and PC3 that you can easily uh, find here. So go to your data table uh, under components tab and go to the PC1 row and find the variable with um, like highest um, distance from zero. And we got a sense from this rank table that these are the useful features. So let's check these features. And I, I believe like the principal components will 
be also um, selecting those features and um, uh, I think these are very low values and uh, this is um, a good value 0.21 uh, and this is actually the maximum um, coefficient for PC1. So PC1 is mostly explained by the feature heat 20. All right, so I will like uh, end this uh, example by the uh, last thing, which is um, uh, as as I have already uh, shown you that this data has some missing values. So you can very easily impute the missing values uh, in orange. So you have to bring an impute widget, and then if you feed your data here you can select like what would be your method to impute. So if you just want to um, do this by averaging or most frequent value, then select your option and it will automatically impute and then you can repeat this whole process with the full data table. All right, so one important thing that I want to mention is um, in orange, whenever you um, edit the data here, it will automatically propagate the results into your next widgets in your workflow, but you can switch that off too. So with this, I would also like to show you another important thing, which is how to install add-ons. So from options, you can go to add-ons and then uh, you can see that there are different add-ons available for network analysis and for different, different things and you just have to select it and you have to click OK, then the add-on will be installed. For an example, you can see that I have already installed bioinformatics and the variance and text analysis. All right, so let's go to the next example that I wanted to show you. And my next example would be, um, Uh, so this is the output of the PCA um, and my next example would be making predictions. So what I will be showing here is I will um, import a data with feature. I'll be using the same data set and I'll be using like a couple of uh, learners. So uh, that uh, the tree method and the random forest adapt boost and logistic regression. I will show how we can generate beautiful rock figures and confusion metrics. All right, and this time I will not be executing everything, but uh, I have the saved project and I'll be just opening the projects. And by that time, I will also be able to show you how to do that. So open a new project. I don't want to save it because I have it already saved. Um, So making prediction.ows, which is the extension of Orange Project. So this is my um, project, and you can see that the training of the of these uh, methods were running uh, whenever I just opened the project. And here I have given a data set, which is like, like the breast cancer data set, but I can actually change it. But let's keep uh, it as it is. So by clicking each of the predictor, you can actually change the uh, parameter of the predictors. So you can change the regularization type for the logistic regression. And you can do this for all these learners. And let's go to the test and score widgets. So here you can see that it is reporting you um, the AUX classification accuracy, F1 precision, a recall, and log loss value of uh, 10 fold cross validation of the data set for all these four um, machine learning methods. Now you can, you can actually do this um, like leave one out test. You can also, also like um, test on your training set and you can also like feed a different data set and test on different data set as we did not feed a separate test set here. So it will not show anything here, but if I do cross validation, then it will run the um, um, training and we'll do uh, report the result. All right. Uh, so you can click the on the confusion matrix, and here you can see the confusion matrix metric for two class classification, and then you can uh, check on different classifiers to see different values. Um, all right. 
now let's um, see the rock analysis so this is the rock analysis and here are your classifier list and you can see the colors and you can draw the rock classifiers for uh, two different classes all right so with that i will switch to my next example all right so i hope you can see my uh, presentation uh, so this is the making predictions workflow and here are the outputs i have just given some screenshots and this is the last example that i'll be showing which is the example of text mining all right let's go to my orange all right uh, i hope you can see uh, my orange interface and now i will open um, the next project which is the text mining project all right so this is the workflow of my text mining project okay so one interesting thing i just wanted to show you that we can label our project um, by a text annotation from here so if i click t here so i can put a text here that this is my text mining example all right uh, uh, so <clears throat> okay let's um walk through this um workflow so here what i have done is um i have a pubmed wizard a widget available in orange so if you go to your pubmed widget so what we can do here is we can give an email address um, for which all the pubmed um, entries of title and abstract abstracts of the paper will be fetched uh, through orange so here i have given like um, the email address of the chief of um, analytic and translation genetics unit of uh, ngh harvard and what is my which is mark daily so this is the email address of mark daily and the author is daily and i am querying with the word genetics and let's find out the records from 2016 to 2018 and so orange could fetch 206 records and of which i only want to see the article title and abstract and i will retrieve only 10 records out of this 206 so let's retrieve the records so the retrieve records um, has been done all right now let's check out um, how the corpus looks into the word cloud okay so here what cloud means it will it will show the uh, words um, in a cloud uh, in this way so as the frequency of the word goes higher the size of the word goes higher in the cloud all right so what we can see here is we have directly fed the extraction from pubmed to the world word cloud so we can really see some silly words for example punctuations and everything so let's see how we can get rid out of here so let's go to the corpus viewer so all these uh, widgets are available here all right so in corpus viewer you can really um, filter your uh, records for an example if i want to see all the records with the words variance so then there will be only five records and you can um, change the search feature so let's uh, change the search feature um, to abstract and title um, or you can do, uh, yes a title and abstract and you can also dis change the display feature to only title and abstract all right and then you have to pre-process this text to uh, do the regular expression based um, tokenization so this is the tokenization uh, window so you can literally like tokenize every word and then you can feed the output to the world cloud and now you can really see some meaningful words not punctuations and other words but still you can see like a single letter like c or 940 which is not useful and there is a way to reduce that as well and and 
that's like you have to like literally type in the words that you do not want to see uh, in your cloud and you have to feed this into this pre-processed text as uh, stop words so here you can see that as stop words i can um, give a text file where the words that we do not want to see in the cloud can be imported all right so this is um the world cloud with all those five records with variants in the title or abstract and this is the world uh world uh cloud with all, all the 10 records and in the left side of the cloud you can see the weights for each of this um word so yeah so this is how we can do like really 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 interesting and meaningful um data mining in orange and which includes like um, um any any other data or even a text and also it can be images for an example in data you can see that we can also import image image data uh, and also one important thing that i should mention that through this file widgets you cannot only import the tab file you can also import your normal XLS file or CSV file or TSV file. So um, from here, you can um, import um, a, 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 even a file from a URL. So that should not be a problem. So, and the last thing that I want to show you is um, uh, you can literally extend the capacity of Orange by uh, typing Python script. So let's open another project this will be very short so this is the project so uh, here i have given a tab file this is a, a file with um, 1728 instances and six features so i have imported the data into a data table and here i have uh, selected like five rows but you also like just skip that selection and then here is my python script so you can see here that you can write your python code here and python takes the data from a data table as in data variable and python outputs the data that is fitted here or you maybe you have just computed uh, you have done some computation and given some output data and it will output the data as out underscore data variable so you can just import orange and take your in data variable and um, output your out data variable so let's uh, see if this import works so if this import works so if i do any print then um, you can run and you can see that the output is available here. So this actually like shows you that uh, you can use all the functionalities that are available in Orange and you can also do anything that is available in Orange and right here and regenerate your data and then feed that data into any other widgets of the Orange. So, yep, um, I think I have like almost finished. Um, and just go to my presentation for the last time. So I've given the output of the text mining here. And yep, that's it. Um, yeah, thank you very much for bearing with me. And I'm sorry that I had to switch back and forth from one screen to another, but I wanted to do some hands-on tutorials, so I had to do it. Thank you very much.